So, no, JJ, <laughs> we're talking to you today over Zoom because you're currently out in New Zealand. Um, you've you've been working for D Thompson this season, based just outside of Invercargill. So, JJ, I'm going to ask you first of all, how have you managed to get out there this year? Because I know there was very few exceptions granted uh, to machinery operators. So there was myself, there was uh, Gavin McDaniel, Peter Tracy and Danny Ryan. And it was more a case of what jobs needed to be done. So there was a vacancy for more drivers. as a chopper driver, there was a bailer driver and there was a loader driver needed. So that was how the four of us got shortlisted for Daryl. Everyone will remember back in possibly September, there was the announcement for that 210 drivers were going to be let into the country. We were only out of isolation now possibly about a week when Daryl texted us to say that 60 or 70 odd people had, had got into the country out of 210. We were only out of the quarantine and uh, it was show up basically then for the Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, we were absolutely blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> like winning lottery. Uh, yeah, uh, better. <laughs> 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 No, you didn't have to go through that because you've actually been there now since 2018. Oh yeah, no, I'm here full time. I came over on September 17, said I'd just do one season and that would be out of blood. And then after that season, I said I'd try America for a season and get that out of blood. And sure, I wasn't over there until I wanted to come back here. So I came back here then after that and I'm here since. And what is it you actually do for D. Thompsons? Because obviously you have a full time role there now. You're there through the summer season and then into quiet period. Yeah, well, during the summer, I would be mowing mostly. Mm-hmm. I spend my season mowing on the Xerians. And sure, then if I'm not on that, I can hop onto a baler, wagon, trailer, just whatever else. And then in the winter, when it all gets quietened down, last winter I spent most of my time in the yard doing okay. the maintenance and all the mowers. Then or anything, you could be muck spreading, you could be drawing bales, you could be anything like that. Well, like, it was everything from just when you go in first and plow a paddock to work it up, sow it. Cut it, put it in a pit, put it in bales, back yeah. out again, spread down and spread slurs, everything really. What kind of gear is Daryl running? Oh, John Deere tractors. Have a couple of Massey's there. Couple then we have the two classic Xerians. A couple of class tractors, and there'll be a couple of couple higher of tractors, tractors. So there's three cases in the yard. They're all kind of yeah. higher in one mm-hmm. way or another. So then these two 950 choppers, three McHale Fusions. All or more is a class, except for one drop down rear crawl more. Just use that for little lifestyle blocks and things like that. Yeah. Uh, coon rakes, dually trailers, and all strong and wagons. And how do you find like land out there compares then, working wise? If the tractors and wagons be your eight series John Deere, so your eight hours, eight two four five hours, big tractors, and a lot of the time people will be looking at them saying, Oh, you could pull that with, uh, say, John D or 6250 or the 215 and this and that and the other. And that's grand in 90% of the paddocks. And then you're on ground that nothing only a 245 would actually hold you. Like there's, there's some fairly, fairly steep, challenging ground there. That's brilliant. Thanks for chatting away to me today, lads. And good luck. Thank you. Olivia. Thanks. 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 You're not alone I'm right here beside you You're not alone You've an army inside So don't be afraid Come what may
So, lads, we did get chatting to JJ the other day, but obviously there's a group of four of you went out, so I wanted to kind of touch in with all of you. So we've got Gavin, Danny, and Peter today, and you're all currently out in New Zealand with D Thompson Contracting. So, Peter, this is this is the second season out with D Thompsons for all of you. Um, so basically what you're doing really is you're you're, ta- you're chasing the seasons. So you've gone from summer in Ireland, summer, to obviously the good weather out in New Zealand. Um, what what made you go with the Thompsons? Originally, I suppose there was a friend of mine who had been with them a few years back. And he was literally the only one who uh, I was speaking that about that was anywhere near New Zealand. And he had just nothing but high praise to him. And it was literally only that I knew someone that was there before. Mm-hmm. was the only reason why I went with them, you know. And I, the fact I got in contact with them early, I suppose, did help me. I had heard previously that up maybe mid-Canterbury and that it tends to dry out a bit quicker than what it would traditionally down south. We do get a lot of rain down in Invercargill, but also we travel over 100k to jobs up north of Invercargill, which is a lot drier. We've got grass since, like, we came over in October the whole way to now. Like, we've been literally out Lucky in that sense. We- yeah, and um, New Zealand really gives you the opportunity to kind of try out machinery that you wouldn't maybe have gotten the chance to um, try at home. There's great opportunities for lads when the season goes on. Like, the only way I got to drive a load was I asked when the hours weren't massive, like, and Peter was there with me and he said to keep an eye on me and, like, you, you want to be able to do everything, realistically, like, at the yeah. end of the day. So, you know, they just kind of, they trust you a bit more and once they see that you're kind of able to do something and you're able to think for yourself. Yeah, and it is a great confidence boost then when you're able to drive something like that out there and you do get the hours under your belt that you know when you come home then that you have the experience. Oh, that's it, exactly. People want experience, but you can't get experience if no one's going to let you drive it, like, you know. Did you have, like, any issues with staff? And then, obviously, with the pandemic, the fact that not as many of you were able to go out this year, were you under severe pressure work-wise that way? Yeah, well, I suppose it's just hard because last season there was over 25 of us got out two here for the season for Thompson, like. So, like, it's obviously a massive strain on him when he can't get the experienced workers in, you know what I mean? Coming from our perspective, not every lad can just jump on a chop or, or jump on a load or, or, you know, like you need a wee bit of experience and a wee bit mechanically minded, like, because if something does go wrong in the field, so you need to know how to sort it yourself or, or at least be fit to tell the mechanics so they can bring power to whatever. So we were under severe pressure and just the hours built up, like, which was pretty mad. But like, we still got it done. We were still grand. It was, we just got in more New Zealand lads and we just kind of all worked together and it, it worked out and then. So we got all the work done. We got a fair shot of it done, like. So on your own point of view, New Zealand is probably one of the best choices you've made. Oh, 100%. It was kind of something that I always said when I was going through college and growing up that I would love to see New Zealand. I was kind of getting to a crossroads at work whether if I didn't go in then, I would never have went. If I was back making that decision, knowing what I know now, I'd make that decision 10 times out of 10. I went out to New Zealand completely knowing no one. I went out on my own life. You meet lifelong friends out there then, like, and you'll, you'll always keep in touch. No matter when we do all, eventually go home. There's great opportunities, like, so... If, uh, if anyone's thinking about it at home, definitely, like, everyone says, oh, I'd love to go to New Zealand, I'd love to go to New Zealand, but, like, you just you just book them one day and next thing you're gone the next, like, and, and then you, you're you just you're just out here then and, and it's just, it's great, like, you, you you think, why didn't I do this five years beforehand, so, yeah. you know, just get on to whoever you know that was, that was out here or even just any information online, just, obviously now in COVID times, it's a bit, everything is a bit up in the air, no one knows what's going on, but, so in a couple of years' time, when it does kind of everything does go back to somewhere normal, um, oh, definitely, definitely, just go online, book the visa, just go. You'll get a job out there if you're an Irish driver in New Zealand. You'll get a job. Well, that's absolutely brilliant, lads. Um, thanks for chatting away to me today because I know obviously there's a massive time difference, so you had to <laughs> you had to hop on quick just after work. Um, but it's been brilliant chatting to you, and uh, thanks for promoting New Zealand. <laughs> no worries at all. Brilliant. Thanks, Hello, crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Olivia. Cheers. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. I can hear you all talking away. I can see you. <laughs>
I'm hating! I would have seen the switch of it. Just turn on your video! <laughs> you're, I presume you're gonna cut this out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very, very lucky. I don't really know how we get in. You're clearly the essential workers they needed. I love our food. So they tell us anyway, or so we'll have. Uh, <laughs> to go from a sea Silage and sea lodge. Silage. 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 Silage.